Throughout centuries of history, the figure of Mary has captured the hearts and devotion of millions across the globe. She is most widely known as the mother of Jesus Christ, but her significance in Christian theology extends far beyond this singular role. Mary is viewed as a model of faith, humility, and obedience, chosen by God for a unique and holy mission. While her pivotal role as the mother of Christ is familiar, there are many aspects of her life and legacy that remain lesser known yet equally profound and inspirational. Before we delve into her story, it's important to note that this video does not promote any specific ideology or religious stance. Rather, our aim is to provide an informative perspective on Mary, based on historical and theological understandings, without intending to challenge or offend any particular belief. This is a space of mutual respect and open understanding, where everyone is welcome, regardless of their faith or personal beliefs. If you find this content insightful, please like, subscribe, and join us as we explore the life and legacy of Mary. From stories of miraculous apparitions to her influence within the history of salvation, Mary is a foundational figure in Christianity. Her name, which derives from the Hebrew Miriam, carries rich symbolic meanings. In Hebrew, the root word Mars suggests a link to the sea, a symbol representing depth, purity, and renewal. This association underscores Mary's central role in Christian tradition as a figure who embodies spiritual cleansing, vast grace, and boundless faith. Known often as the Virgin Mary, she is seen as an exemplar of purity and grace, and her role as the mother of Jesus establishes her as a divine symbol of spiritual motherhood and a bridge between humanity and the divine. The life of Mary is marked by many remarkable moments that combine divine intervention with the social and cultural context of her time. One of the most significant events, of course, is the Annunciation the moment when the angel Gabriel came to her with the news that she would conceive and bear a son who would be the promised Messiah. This story, detailed in the Gospel of Luke, presents Mary as a young woman living in Nazareth. Gabriel, sent by God, greets her with the words, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Luke 1 28. Mary, understandably perplexed by this greeting, listens as Gabriel tells her that she has been chosen to bear a son who would be called Jesus, the Son of the Highest. When Mary asks how this is possible, given her virginity, Gabriel explains that the Holy Spirit would come upon her, and the power of the Highest would overshadow her, resulting in the holy conception of Jesus. Mary's response is one of humility and acceptance, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word, Luke 1 38. Mary, understandably perplexed by this greeting, listens as Gabriel tells her that she has been chosen to bear a son who would be called Jesus, the son of the highest. When Mary asks how this is possible, given her virginity, Gabriel explains that the Holy Spirit would come upon her, and the power of the highest would overshadow her, resulting in the holy conception of Jesus. Mary's response is one of humility and acceptance, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word Luke 1 38. This simple yet profound act of faith and submission is central to Christian theology, as it represents Mary's willingness to embrace God's will, trusting fully in the divine plan. The Annunciation marks the beginning of the fulfillment of the Messianic promise, symbolizing God's intervention in human history through the incarnation of His Son. Many Christians view Mary as a new Eve whose obedience stands in contrast to the disobedience of the first Eve, thus bringing new hope and redemption to humankind. In considering Mary's role in the divine narrative, it's important to reflect on the cultural and historical context in which she lived. Scholars generally agree that Mary was likely very young at the time of her engagement and the Annunciation, possibly between 13 and 15 years old, a common age for betrothal in first-century Jewish society. While this age may seem surprising by today's standards, it was typical in the Jewish culture of that period, as young girls were often betrothed soon after reaching puberty. In light of her youth, Mary's response to Gabriel's message underscores the depth of her faith and courage. Accepting such an extraordinary role in God's plan, knowing the possible social risks and misunderstandings she might face, reveals a spiritual maturity and trust that transcends her physical age. The context of her time also offers insight into the role of women in Jewish society. 
Although women's social status was limited, Mary's story demonstrates how God can choose and elevate individuals from humble and marginalized backgrounds for remarkable purposes. Here is a young woman from an unremarkable village who, by God's will, becomes the mother of Jesus Christ, a title that places her in a unique and exalted position in the Christian faith. One of the most profound and moving scenes involving Mary occurs during the crucifixion of Jesus. The Gospel of John describes this scene with powerful simplicity. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene John 19:25. This image of Mary standing at the foot of the cross is a powerful symbol of fidelity and maternal love. Here, she bears witness to the suffering and death of her son, participating in his pain in a deeply personal way. Theologians have often viewed this moment as an extension of her acceptance and trust in God's plan, first shown at the Annunciation. Just as she accepted her role as the mother of Jesus with faith, she now accepts the agony of watching him die, embodying a faith that remains steadfast even in the darkest of circumstances. Moreover, Mary's presence at the crucifixion is often interpreted as a symbol of the church itself. In John 19, 26, 27, Jesus, seeing his mother and the beloved disciple John, says, Woman, behold your son, and to the disciple, behold your mother. This act is seen as a moment of theological importance, in which Mary is given to humanity as a spiritual mother. This passage is one of the foundations of Marian doctrine, which views Mary not only as the mother of Jesus, but also as the mother of all Christians, a role she continues to fulfill through her maternal care and intercession. The crucifixion thus becomes the climax of the mystery of salvation. And Mary's presence reinforces both the human and divine dimensions of this event. Her presence is a silent witness to the redemptive suffering of Christ. Echoing Simeon's prophecy that a sword will pierce your soul also Luke 2.35 signifying the pain she would endure as part of her role in the divine plan. This shared suffering between mother and son presents a model of faith and resilience, inspiring Christians to find meaning and hope even in the most difficult experiences. There is also a historical curiosity surrounding the figure of Mary of Clopas, mentioned in the New Testament as being present at the crucifixion. In the Jewish culture of the time, the term sister could refer to a range of familial relationships, not necessarily indicating a blood sibling. Many scholars interpret Mary of Clopas as a cousin or other close relative of the Virgin Mary, possibly a significant part of the extended family that supported Jesus during his ministry. This connection, though not explicitly clarified in the Gospels, adds depth to the understanding of Jesus' family network illustrating a close-knit community united in faith and support for one another. The genealogies of Mary and Joseph also play a crucial role in Christian theology, as both are described as descendants of the House of David, a lineage central to the biblical narrative of the Messiah. Matthew and Luke's Gospels both include genealogies that connect Jesus to King David, fulfilling the messianic prophecies that the Savior would come from David's line. Matthew's genealogy emphasizes Joseph's role as Jesus' legal father, tracing the line back to Abraham and establishing Jesus' claim to the throne of David through his adopted father. Luke's genealogy is often seen as representing Mary's line, tracing Jesus' ancestry to David through another son, Nathan. This genealogy provides a biological link to the house of David showing that Jesus inherits both the legal rights of the Davidic line through Joseph and a biological connection through Mary. Together, these genealogies reinforce Jesus' legitimacy as the Messiah and highlight God's faithfulness in fulfilling promises made to the house of Israel. Veneration of Mary is deeply rooted in Christian traditions, and her legacy is honored through a variety of practices and devotions. In the Catholic Church, Prayers such as the Hail Mary and the Rosary are central to the life of the faithful. The Rosary, in particular, is a meditative prayer that reflects on the mysteries of Christ's life through the perspective of Mary. The repetition of prayers combined with contemplative meditation allows devotees to enter a deeper spiritual connection, seeking Mary's intercession and guidance. In Orthodox Christianity, Mary is also venerated with great devotion. Hymns and chants, such as the Axion Estin, 
celebrate her role with poetic beauty, elevating the hearts of the faithful. Icons of Mary, referred to as the Etokia God-bearer, are often found in Orthodox homes, serving as visual reminders of her presence and maternal protection. Devotion to Mary extends beyond prayers and hymns to include pilgrimages to Marian shrines where miraculous appearances of Mary have been reported, sites like Lourdes in France, Fatima in Portugal, and Guadalupe in Mexico attract millions of pilgrims each year who come seeking healing, comfort, and spiritual inspiration. During these pilgrimages, the faithful participate in processions, light candles, and offer flowers, expressing their love and gratitude to the Virgin Mary. Mary is regarded as a compassionate mother who brings prayers to God, interceding on behalf of her followers. This belief is grounded in her unique closeness to Jesus, not only as his mother, but as a faithful disciple who deeply understood the mystery of salvation. Throughout centuries, stories of miracles attributed to Mary's intercession have strengthened the faith of believers. From physical and spiritual healings to divine protection in times of crisis, Mary is often depicted as a symbol of hope and a source of strength. For those who face hardship, inviting the faithful to turn to her in times of trouble, this understanding of Mary as a compassionate and approachable intercessor has deep roots in Christian tradition and remains a powerful aspect of her veneration. Some Christian theologians view Mary as the new Eve, a role that highlights her significance in the story of redemption. Just as Eve's disobedience led to humanity's fall from grace, Mary's obedience brings the possibility of salvation. The concept of Mary as the new Eve is linked to her acceptance of God's will at the Annunciation, a moment that reverses the disobedience of the first woman. In this sense, Mary is seen as cooperating with God's grace to undo the effects of original sin. Furthermore, Mary is often compared to the Ark of the Covenant as she carried Jesus, the Word of God, within her womb. The Ark, a sacred vessel that held the tablets of the Ten Commandments, symbolizes the presence of God among his people. Mary, as the living ark, carries within her the divine presence, fulfilling and surpassing the symbolism of the Old Covenant. Mary holds a central and revered role in the story of salvation, embodying the virtues of faith and obedience, which serve as a model for Christians worldwide. Her life and unwavering devotion make her an exemplar of humility, courage, and trust in God. Her story continues to inspire the faithful to draw closer to God and to walk paths of righteousness and grace. Across Christian history, miraculous apparitions of Mary have profoundly moved countless believers, leading to increased devotion and spiritual transformation. Among the most celebrated Marian apparitions are those in Fatima, Lourdes, and Guadalupe. Each appearance brought messages of hope, peace, and spiritual conversion, leaving lasting impacts on the faith of millions. These messages continue to resonate, reminding believers of God's love and Mary's role in guiding humanity toward salvation. In 1917, in Fatima, Portugal, three young shepherd children Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco experienced several apparitions of the Virgin Mary. Mary appeared to them dressed in white, holding a rosary, and asked them to pray fervently for the conversion of sinners and for peace in a troubled world. Over the course of the apparitions, she conveyed messages of penance, prayer, and devotion to her Immaculate Heart. The apparitions at Fatima reached a miraculous climax on October 13, 1917, in what is famously known as the Miracle of the Sun. On this day, thousands of people gathered and witnessed a supernatural event in which the sun appeared to move or dance across the sky. This extraordinary phenomenon not only strengthened the faith of those present but also emphasized Mary's urgent message, calling people to seek God, pray, and turn their hearts toward repentance. Today, Fatima has become a major pilgrimage site, attracting millions of visitors each year who seek to connect with Mary's messages of peace, penance, and spiritual renewal. Pilgrims come to Fatima to honor Mary's request for prayers for the world and to deepen their faith by reflecting on her messages. Similarly, in 1858, in Lourdes, France, a young girl named Bernadette Subiris encountered a series of visions of a lady dressed in white who identified herself as the Immaculate Conception. 
During these apparitions, Mary revealed a spring of water, which soon became renowned for its healing properties. To this day, Lourdes is known for its miraculous cures, many of which have been documented and investigated by the Church. The messages of Lourdes emphasize prayer, repentance, and a renewed faith in God. Despite her humble background, Bernadette became a central figure in Marian devotion. And Lourdes remains a place where countless individuals come to seek both physical and spiritual healing as well as to find comfort in God's promises. Lourdes has become a powerful symbol of Mary's love and compassion. People come from around the world to bathe in the healing waters, to seek miraculous cures, or simply to experience the sense of peace and hope that Lourdes offers. This site has become a source of inspiration and faith, reminding the faithful that God's grace and mercy are ever-present. One of the earliest and most culturally significant apparitions occurred in 1531 in Mexico, where the Virgin Mary appeared to an indigenous man named Juan Diego. Known as Our Lady of Guadalupe, this apparition remains a deeply important symbol for the people of the Americas. Mary appeared to Juan Diego on the hill of Tipiac, asking him to request the construction of a church in her honor. As proof of her appearance, she caused roses to bloom on the cold, barren hill in the middle of winter, an unmistakable miracle. She also left her image imprinted on Juan Diego's cloak, known as the Tilma, which is still preserved and displayed in the Basilica of Guadalupe. The Basilica of Guadalupe has grown into one of the largest pilgrimage sites globally. As millions visit each year to honor Mary and reflect on her message of love, compassion, and protection, the image of Our Lady of Guadalupe holds a unique place in the hearts of believers as a symbol not only of faith, but also of cultural identity, particularly for the people of Latin America. Mary's message at Guadalupe continues to resonate with those who seek her intercession and who find hope and encouragement in her compassionate love. Mary's role in the Christian faith is also deeply connected to biblical interpretations. In the book of Revelation, chapter 12, we encounter an enigmatic, symbolic figure often identified as the heavenly woman. This vision presents a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet and a crown of 12 stars upon her head. Christian tradition has offered various interpretations of this majestic figure, and different theological perspectives provide unique insights into her identity and meaning. One interpretation suggests that the heavenly woman represents the church collective body of believers redeemed by Christ. In this view, the imagery of the sun, moon, and stars signifies the church's glory, her submission to Christ, and her continuity with the twelve tribes of Israel. This perspective emphasizes the church's role in salvation history and its connection to God's promises in the Old Testament. Another interpretation sees the heavenly woman as a symbol of Israel, the people chosen by God in the Old Testament. The twelve stars represent the twelve tribes of Israel, highlighting Israel's vital role in God's plan of salvation. This view underscores the continuity between the Old and New Testaments and affirms that God's covenant with Israel endures. A third perspective, particularly significant within Catholic tradition, identifies the heavenly woman as Mary herself. Mary is revered as the mother of Jesus, making her a central figure in salvation history. In this interpretation, the image of the heavenly woman reflects Mary's purity, her close relationship with Christ, and her role as a protective figure for all believers. Regardless of the interpretation, the heavenly woman symbolizes God's enduring faithfulness and protection, even amid spiritual challenges. In addition to her appearances and symbolic presence in Scripture, Mary's assumption into heaven holds great significance, particularly within the Catholic and Orthodox traditions. The assumption refers to Mary being taken up to heaven in both body and soul, an event celebrated with reverence and devotion. While the Bible does not provide details about Mary's death, the assumption is a long-held tradition based on early Christian writings and apostolic tradition. The Catholic doctrine of the assumption asserts that Mary, after her earthly life, was taken into heavenly glory without the decay of the body. This belief was formally defined as a dogma by Pope Pius XII in 1950, affirming that Mary was assumed into heaven.
The Feast of the Assumption, celebrated on August 15th, is a major event in the Catholic liturgical calendar and is marked by special masses, processions, and acts of devotion. The Orthodox Church also honors Mary's Assumption, though the exact date of celebration may vary. This feast serves as a reminder of Mary's holiness, her unique relationship with Christ, and her role as an intercessor for believers. The Assumption also carries a profound theological message. It highlights the dignity of the human body and affirms that the body is an essential part of the human person destined for resurrection and eternal glory. In taking Mary to heaven, God anticipates the final resurrection of all believers, offering a glimpse of the eternal life promised to the faithful. Mary's Assumption is thus not only a celebration of her life but also a sign of hope for all Christians, symbolizing the union of body and soul in the presence of God. Mary's legacy in the Christian faith is timeless and immeasurable. As the mother of Jesus, she embodies qualities such as faith, humility, obedience, and unconditional love. Her title soar Lady of Perpetual Help, Queen of Peace, Mother of Mercy, and others reflect her compassionate intercession and care for humanity. Her life journey is an enduring source of inspiration from the moment of the Annunciation by the angel Gabriel to her presence at the cross, and finally to her assumption into heaven. In each of these moments, Mary displayed courage, trust, and submission to God's will, offering believers a profound example of how to live a life dedicated to love, faith, and service. Through her actions and her unwavering trust in God's plan, Mary reminds us of the importance of faith, prayer, and a heart open to God's guidance. Her example encourages us to seek reconciliation, peace, and compassion in our relationships, embodying Christ's love in every aspect of our lives. Inspired by Mary, believers are called to embrace a life of faith and devotion, trusting in God's presence and guidance even through life's challenges. In conclusion, the life of Mary offers a model of faith, humility, and resilience, inspiring believers to find hope and strength in times of suffering. Her story is a testament to the power of faith and the transformative impact of a life lived in obedience to God. Through her acceptance of God's will, her unwavering devotion to her son, and her role as a spiritual mother, Mary continues to be a powerful source of spiritual inspiration and a beacon of hope for millions around the world.